Hey everyone, welcome back to Fully Involved, where we talk about reviews of my own music and nothing else. And today we're going to be talking about the newest video from Spectrum Pulse called Trailing Edge Episode 005-April2018, parentheses 3 seconds to Mars, Wiley Nothing Nowhere Ellipses. So there's a very good reason why in this string of reviews for insolence I've been watching over the course of this afternoon that I put this one last because LP Club I had a feeling would be pretty positive from what he was telling me. Uh, Rewind and Air TV, I kind of had a good feeling but you know there wasn't exactly much in the way of correspondence. This is the one where I feel like things are going to get really interesting. But for those of you guys that aren't aware of the second half of the top two best music reviewers named Mark on YouTube, I've been subbed him for god coming up on like five years now and as nervous as I am to see what he thinks of insolence I'm actually the by far the most excited to see him talk about it because not really to be a detriment to any other music reviewers but he's one of the few where I will watch every video regardless of if I've even heard of the album because some people might call him harsh personally I think he's probably the most insightful music reviewer on YouTube he never gives an opinion he can't back up and it's fascinating to just hear him break down why exactly something does or doesn't work at its very core and that's why toward the tail end of April I submitted insolence for the trailing edge tier on his patreon schedule because I had a feeling you know it's an EP and it'll be on the trailing edge where he just talks about stuff he didn't have much to say about it's kind of low stakes whereas if I had actually put the full-length album on the schedule like in one of the actual tiers then that might have been asking a little too much and if I'm honest after how long that took I'm not sure if I could have taken the reality of him breaking down the production on that thing I'm expecting a lot of criticism but also really constructive criticism. In fact, right here on this here sticky note, in fact, just to kind of help me get in the mindset, uh, I actually wrote down five gripes that I predict uh, Mark will have about insolence, just so I can kind of mentally prepare myself going in. One, that the vocals don't really have much real range or that they can strain at a couple points. Two, that the lyrics can be vague, maybe lack some distinctive detail. Three, that the guitar tones don't really switch up much or maybe don't have enough punch in the mix. Four, and probably most obvious, that it is a pretty short EP at around 11 minutes, so he won't really have too much to say about it compared to a more fleshed out album statement. And wrapping up by giving it a very light 6 out of 10, and at least recommending it because I have potential. With that out of the way, I did watch the rest of this video. Uh, it can't be any worse than what he said about 30 Seconds to Mars, which uh, was very justified, by the way. And because this is probably going to be the shortest review out of any of these I'm reacting to, I'm probably going to be technically playing most of what he has to say here, but I do still highly recommend checking out the video that this came from The Trailing Edge, because again, I just really highly recommend you guys check out what he's doing. If you really like music of any kind of genre, check him out. And yeah, let's just get this going. Fully involved, Spectrum Pulse, Insolence Review, let's freaking go. Play. 4 to 10. Next up, the new EP Hopefully it won't be from foreshadowing. Fully Involved Insolence. Okay, he's starting, he's starting with the title track. And with the intro of it. That's fascinating. I wonder if he's going to say I should like, stay in my lower range. So I think one feature of the trailing edge will be me covering projects from artists in my general social circle. In this case, yeah. with somebody that I've actually worked with before. Yeah, back when his channel was called Spin It Reviews, I teamed up with Mark Berman for a review of Bulletproof Picasso by Train, which went pretty well. And I find it interesting you said that. <laughs> And looking back, I really wish you joined me and Johnny for that one podcast where I talked about a, go a girl, a bottle, a boat for an hour, because that would have been fun. Because for those of you guys that aren't in the know about Train, Bolt for Picasso was like the Train album that was like the least fun to talk about or roast because it was just kind of boring. And now I've officially talked more about Train than my own EP, so let's fix that. I know he's got a quick 11 minute rock EP, and it's actually pretty damn good. On comp- <laughs> Heck yeah! Positional level, it reminds me a lot of mid '90s Green Day on a shoestring budget, with more jagged <laughs> indie lo-fi production complementing a pretty strong melodic core, especially with those murky guitar yeah. tones and bass lines, almost a little reminiscent of Pavement and Dinosaur Jr. in spots, and that's only a positive for me. 
Okay, wow. Oh, I am so happy about this. Okay, we haven't checked any of the checkboxes yet. Uh, pavement, that's always a good comparison. I really should get into Dinosaur Jr. I'm always fascinated when compared to acts that I haven't really delved that much into, but I'm gonna have to do that. And I like a lot of the lyrics too. The progression from some degree of compassion for this chronically ill person to curdling anger and frustration at one's own frailty and the dispassionate medical system's difficulty dealing with chronic conditions. It's handled pretty damn well. And the writing is pretty sharp in order to capture some of that emotional nuance and that greater progression that oh my god this is amazing he's basically turning my whole eth pathos on this ep into like an academic essay i don't see how any artist could be insulted watching a review of his even if he, even if they're trashing it ah god okay let's keep going <laughs> And the writing is pretty sharp in order to capture some of that emotional nuance and that greater progression, that building anger and intensity. Now, if I do have some issues with the yeah. project, it comes in the production and the mixing, specifically around the vocals. I don't know that the vocals can't afford to be a little rougher around the edges, but the vocal track and any overdubs feel mm -hmm. kind of slapdash and maybe even a little bit too clean in the delivery to mesh with some of the rougher grooves. They could have accorded to go a little sense. bit harder. I would have appreciated that. See, I find that fascinating. That kind of goes against the ch This is just defying all these- Screw you, post-it! Okay, so there's no real complaints about, like, straining or anything like that. If anything, I should have gone harder. That's noted. Connects pretty damn well. It's a solid EP. 7 out of 10. Yes! And wow, I still haven't gone, a gone below a 7 yet. Uh, I, I hope I can become the next Eric Taxon now. Or Taxon, sorry, I'm just I just realized after his Q&A that I was pronouncing it wrong for months now. But, yeah. Because what I was honestly expecting is that it would be a mostly kind of letting me down gently, like, yeah, it's okay thing that not many people pay much mind to, you know? It was on the back row of the thumbnail, you know? Because again, like, he's by far the most, like, incisive and, like, picking apart every little detail kind of critic on YouTube, but without getting, like, super, like, snobby about it. I'm kind of glad that he was a little bit easy on the production, even if, yeah, it was recorded in a house, but I mean, I do think it's really interesting that there was his one complaint, but then, like, the main positive other people took away from it was that the production was such a step up. I guess that's the one spot where, like, the critics disagree here? But other than that, you know, now I'm curious what his favorite and least favorite tracks are. Oh, he, he called it 40 at 40 in the description. That's cute. That's cute. I, I guess it's kind of a weird title, so whatever. I guess I get that. But it's not like I was expecting him to, like, trash the thing on an AGR level or anything. But, yeah, guys, definitely do check out his channel and subscribe. And I probably would have said that even if he gave me, like, a... Uh, like a 30 Seconds to Mars or like a Thomas Rhett style thrashing. Maybe even XXX tennis ball style rant, I don't even know. 7 out of 10, that's a pretty, it's pretty good by his scale, so. But uh, yeah, pretty good end to this run of videos. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, Fantano, if you're watching, I'm just saying. Or Crash, if you're watching, I'm just saying. Big Quint, I don't know, at least every health is kind of an energizer, I suppose. I can see him doing a chair dance to that. And on that note, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you came here, you know, from the Spectrum Pulse connection, I did do reactions to four other reviews, three others of which were filmed over the course of this. Uh, I changed shirts for every one of them to reflect the artist. In this case, his controversial nine, which I partially agree with. If you guys haven't checked out Insolence, uh, do that. If you want to know what the hell these guys are talking about, links will be in the description for the Bandcamp. You can stream it there on Spotify or Apple Music or get it for $2 if you want to support what I'm doing here. After this and after final season, I'm definitely going to be working on putting together those behind-the-scenes vlogs and a couple more shit posty kind of things, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.